What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Post Game Podcast live from EA Play here in Los Angeles. I'm your host, Mark Price. With me, as always, Corey Andrus. What's going on, everybody? It's uh, it's been a very long uh, couple days, but we're excited. Uh, still excited to be here. Uh, lots to talk about. Let's just get right into it. Yeah, we got some very special guests with us today from EA Tiburon from the Madden NFL Football Team, John White and Clint Oldenburg. How are you guys doing today? Doing well. Thanks for having us. Thank you very much for being on. So let's jump right into it. Um, biggest additions this year, Madden gameplay-wise, we've both had a chance to play it for a while, um, and we agree that the live ball physics is one of the biggest kind of on-field, non-AI things that you guys did this year. How did that come about in terms of planning and developing that? Well, really, it came from you guys. It came from the community. It was a request that you guys have had for a few years now and we were finally able to deliver. It really adds a lot of dynamic nature to the game. The, you know, the football is an oblong shape, and it has all kinds of funny bounces off the turf and off of players, and it really makes gameplay a lot more unpredictable than what we've had before. Great. Yeah, uh, John, I want to speak a little bit about Connected Franchise. Uh, obviously, you've kind of taken the reins this year uh, for that department. Uh, there's been a lot of talk over the last couple of weeks, a lot of hype over the blog coming out. Can you just go over some of the, the new changes and uh, streamlining of the, of the Connected Franchise mode this year? So, yeah, we've done a lot of improvements to the mode. Uh, first starts with Play the Moments. Uh, it's a brand new addition to the mode where you can now play uh, your Madden games much faster than you ever could before. So you can get through a Madden game in about 15, 20 minutes. And in franchise, you get through a whole season in a weekend. So uh, that's a really big change where you just can load in, play the key moments, and uh, have a really big impact on the game and, and get out and move on and keep managing your team. But we've touched a lot of stuff in the mode. So uh, game prep is out. We have game planning in where you can, uh, you have game plans that are set up based on your opponent's tendencies. You have an offensive and a defensive game plan, and based on which ones you choose, there's a tangible boost to the game for that week. Um, on top of that, we've added uh, big decisions and several different community requests. Um, the community requests, we've got bottom line score ticker in, we've got practice squad, we've got uh, full player editing, those are the three big ones, but we've done a lot of other um, additions to the mode, um, just made it better all around. Now there's been a little bit of confusion from the community as to like how the score ticker works, how the games are simulated. Can you talk a little bit about how that all kind of feeds into the ticker when you have maybe like 32 teams being controlled? Like how does that all work together? Okay, so it's based on the time of day your game is. So if you're playing a 1 o'clock game, all the other 1 o'clock games you see in progress um, as you play it through. So if it's a user game, if it's a 32-man league or whatever, you would be able to, any of the games that have been completed ahead of time, you will see updates with them throughout the game, just like they were playing it at the same time you were. Um, otherwise, it'll show up as it's a user game and it hasn't been played yet. So any game that has been played ahead of time will be just treated like all the other normal CPU games. I guess that's probably the easiest way to understand. So like it simulates in order, sort of like NCAA did, like in terms of in the week as well. It's like both at the same time. Yeah, so you know, we, we match, we try to be authentic in terms of if you're playing at one o'clock, you'll see all the other one, one o'clock games uh, going on. Um, but yeah, with user games, you know, we, we, don't, uh, we don't show you the score updates unless the user's completed that game. So in theory, if someone's playing a Monday night game and no other users in their league have played, they will just see this is a user game. This, they won't necessarily get any score updates. Exactly. Okay, that's fine. Clint, I wanted to go a little bit into the kick meter this year. Uh, it's uh, vastly different from years past, uh, all brand new. Um, can you go a little bit into detail about uh, sort of what sparked this kick, kick meter, uh, what kind of changes it brings to the game, and, and what your overall goal was uh, for, for developing this? Yeah, absolutely. So. Obviously, all football fans know that they moved the extra point back to the 15-yard line, and that had a dramatic effect in the game uh, in the NFL. Kicks are harder now, those extra points. You're seeing a missed. I mean, Blair Walsh in the playoffs last year, right? The field goal kicking is no longer a gimme play, and we wanted to reflect that in our game. So uh, we took a concept that's used in a lot of other sports games. It's a three-click skill-based mechanic, and essentially we're letting you select your power and your accuracy and that's based on the length of the kick and your kicker's ratings. And uh, we just want to make that more immersive. Uh, a lot of people in the past have called special teams a bathroom break, for lack of a better term. 
And so we're trying to uh, bring that game up to the par with the rest of the game. Uh, a couple quick tidbits about it. Uh, you'll notice that you are able to kick a little further in Denver. Uh, so that you do get a little bit of a power boost in Denver, you'll get a little bit of a power boost in dome stadiums, and you'll get some accuracy penalties when kicking in snow and rain games. Wow. So basically, uh, it's come to the point now where weather and home field advantage are, are going to be a little bit of a, an advantage to you. Absolutely. Definitely in the special teams, and uh, it's just the tip of the iceberg, really. I mean, we want to expand that much further in the future, so this is just kind of a preview. That's, that's perfect to hear. Great. That's great. So some other big gameplay additions, you know, there's been big vlogs about gap play and about the improvements to zone defense. So when a person who is accustomed to playing Madden picks up Madden 17 for the first time, what are some of the things that they're going to have to look for in order to adjust what they've been doing in the past? Well, this really came from uh, really wanting to stop money plays. So you're getting hurt by your opponent on a specific concept over and over and over. Let's say fullback dive, verticals, you know, those common plays everyone likes to run. This was a brainchild of how do we give the user the tools to stop something they know that they want to stop, but they aren't overly familiar with how football and def or defense in football works. So we started with uh, alignment, got all of our defenders, that's where the auto flip feature came from. We get our defenders in the right place so that they can play the gaps they're supposed to play. Then we up upgraded the zone coverage and the pattern matching. That's a game changer in itself, right? Mm -hmm. So we, we now have guys in zones able to pick up a guy crossing their zone and basically become man coverage on the guy following his rule set for each zone. Uh, new people to Madden are, are going to really be crash course in simulation football. And guys like you have been playing Madden for years, you're gonna feel a drastic difference in how everything is played, everything is defended. And it all rolls up into our run pass counters, uh, a new feature in the playbook menu where you can pick what part of the field and what play type you're looking to defend and we'll give you all the, all the right plays to pick from to take that away from your opponent. Uh, and then John, built into franchise mode now is telemetry, where you'll see certain tendencies, um, especially for other users, in franchise mode. So how does that data get pulled and how is it kind of surfaced to the player? So in the game planning screen, uh, when you load in there, you'll see a little widget from uh, a little widget UI element on the left that you can tab through and you can see the offensive tendencies and defensive tendencies for your opponent. So you can see uh, on offense you'll be able to see run pass and you'll see the top three or so off uh, run and passing concepts that they run. On top of that, <clears throat> on the defensive side you see all the various defensive concepts and the, and the percentage of time they go to it. And also um, uh, I think I guess that's it on the defensive side. But oh, the top players. You also see the top players and uh, what scheme your opponent is set to. Great, great. Uh, one more quick question for John. Um, we also wanted to dive into some commentary quickly here too. But John, I had a, a community question on Twitter that uh, that was asking me when will we ever see a kind of story mode that we saw uh, that we're seeing in FIFA this year. Obviously, you, you can't answer that. We, we're, we're not looking into the future here. But what are your thoughts on what FIFA is doing with their, their sort of narrative storytelling? Well, do you think we'll ever get to a point where we will see something like that in Madden NFL? So, um, I, I hope so. Uh, we, uh, we definitely love FIFA's approach and we, we love, you know, that's, that's what we do. We want to just make that single player and multiplayer experience that much richer with story elements, hopefully in the future. But, um, you know, obviously, uh, Madden 17, we've added a lot of uh, great improvements to, like, the core mechanics and tie into the commentary where it's not necessarily a uh, story, like, uh, you know, hero's journey type narrative, mm -hmm. but we have a lot of these story elements in the game uh, tied to decisions that you're making. So, as you're uh, managing your team, the commentary commentary team speaking to it, plus the addition to the bottom line ticker in the game kind of brings that element alive. So it kind of feels like you're playing more of the story of your season, and that's what we focus on this year. Great. So speaking more then about the commentary in general, uh, this was a, another blog that went out late last week or something like that. Who knows what today is anymore? Um, what are some of the things that players can look forward to hearing that they have not heard before in Madden commentary? Well, the first thing that sticks out is Brandon Godden and Charles Davis are absolutely wonderful together. They have really good chemistry. They bring a new excitement level to the game. 
Uh, they bring humor. They bring football knowledge. Um, they just they just make it feel a lot different. And then on top of that, we've had unprecedented access to these guys, countless hours of capturing content, and we're going to be able to bring that to you guys dynamically over the course of the year after launch. So you're always going to be getting fresh content in there. And I think that that's a really big game changer for us because one of the pieces of feedback we very commonly hear is after I play through three or four games, I just hear the same lines over and over and over. So our goal is that you won't hear that anymore. Uh, and, and moving forward again, just like the kick meter, this is tip of the iceberg. We're going to have these guys for a long time and it's just going to continue to get better. Yeah, yeah it's actually quite funny that in, in one of the games we were playing, uh, I had Charles Davis laugh at me at one point. I hurdled and uh, kind of like the, the player fell over and he just kind of laughed at me and laughed about the play. And it was really, I've never seen that in Madden before. It was really, really, really Yeah, cool. he didn't like preface it with anything. He just started laughing. At the and play it itself, really cool which is fantastic, yeah. Yeah, those guys are fantastic. I think I think the users out there, the Madden fans, are really going to enjoy them. Uh, one more quick question for Clint here. In regards to tuning, there's obviously been a lot of uh, talk about these special teams plays uh, when it comes to, you know, uh, punt fakes and, and field goal fakes and the blocking. Uh, how is this tuned to be, you know, how, how often are we going to see these in games? And, and what mechanics have been built into the system to, I guess, kind of not allow users to make those money plays on blocks and, and sure. time them right? So we'll start with a quick introduction of how the feature works. Essentially, you have to call the right play that counters the play your opponent is calling. So for a punt play, for example, if I am in max protect punt and you're in punt block, you have zero chance to block that punt. So that's my counter on that play. But if I'm in a regular punt and you're in punt block, that's when your chance opens up. But that makes you more susceptible to a fake punt. So it's a, a game of strategy and there's risk reward involved in there. What the mechanic is, uh, in pre-snap, you'll see the coach cam art and you'll see icons over defenders. And those are the eligible defenders to block the kick based on the play that you call. So in order to even have a chance to block one, you have to be user controlling one of those defenders and then use the off-the-line mechanic that we've had for a couple years for defensive linemen. You gotta time the snap perfectly, steer your guy in the right position and actually do the block yourself. And we built this in a manner that we can control the outcome so that we're, we're, we're in control of how many are getting blocked. If I had to give you a set number, I would say, ideally it would be at least less than once a game, hopefully even less than that. Uh, it's not at, in its final state yet. We're still you know, testing, getting feedback from EA Play, but we're, we're pretty confident that it's not gonna be an exploitable thing and you're not gonna get a, a ton of block kicks and a ton of fakes. Uh, but it really just depends on your play style and how much risk you're willing to take. Yeah, and, and two things I noticed too, just for our, our users listening in, is that uh, for one, it seems a lot easier to hit the kicker on a roughing the kicker play when you do want to block kicks. So you almost have that risk reward mentality where, okay, you can go to block the kick, but you have a much higher you know chance to to, to knock down the kicker, and uh, that's going to cause you to you know take a pause on, on using yeah, those plays absolutely. as well. That, that's intentional too. We yeah. we definitely want to make sure that if you're making contact with that guy, we're following the NFL rules and that's an added level of risk of going after that kick. Yeah, and there's also a mechanic built in too in user versus user situations where you can actually as the kicker you can hold down the button and let go of it when you want to uh, let go of that kick and hunt the ball. So that will, you know, cause a defensive player to also have to time to your press and you can also get them off sides if, if you know you hold the button yeah. and they want to rush right away. Absolutely. So Absolutely. You can get them you can get their timing off by doing that and I also want to add one more thing on that. Uh, the clock is also running while you're performing your kick on the new kick meter. So in years past, uh, people have always complained about being able to get a field goal off in under like six seconds or something, and that wasn't realistic. So the clock is not going to stop like it did before. Once you start that kick meter, it's still rolling. So if you're in a last second situation, and you're trying to get a kick up, you gotta get that meter rolling or the clock's gonna expire. And icing the kicker is back, correct? Yes, it is. Uh, we have very specific situations where it's in play, both the AI will do it as well as users. And what that does is, is makes the skill-based kick mechanic and turns it into muscle memory. Uh, I'm not gonna give away exactly what that looks like yet. I want you guys to play it. But essentially, it's gonna make you feel like in real life when you're getting ice, can you just go through the motions that you've practiced, go through the motions that you've practiced get your kick off by just remembering the timing of your specific kick. Wow, okay. Great. So one of the things that we're going to be asking the developers that we meet with today and that we're going to kind of pose to either one of you who feels compelled to answer it, what's a like? What's one sentence that you would um, think of or, or 
you know, present when thinking about like how Madden 17 represents the, the game and the brand, like the legacy of the brand? Well, we can both take a shot. I, I would say um, it's the most complete and most balanced Madden to date. Perfect. Great. Yeah, you want to take a crack at it, John? Yeah, I mean, that's what um, <laughs> that's what we're supposed to say. But, you know, I, I'm the franchise guy, so I'm going to take the franchise approach. And, I mean, so, you know, we've started this journey since um, Madden 13, where we've you know, restarted uh, franchise mode, and we've been adding a lot of new features since then. And... You know, I feel like where we are now, it's just it's a really great place, and um, we're obviously looking to add more. But in terms of franchise mode, it's a, a really deep um, experience, and I think all those franchise guys are going to be happy with what they get. All right. Well, we want to thank you both for being with us today. Where can our listeners find you guys on Twitter to kind of interact in a very pleasant and helpful way? <laughs> uh, I'm at Clint Oldenburg, just my name at Clint C L I N T O L D E N B U R G. I'm at EA underscore white. All right. Well, thank you all very much for being with us. Hopefully you have a nice, relaxing time with the rest of your time here in Los Angeles. Good luck to both of you. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks guys. guys.